Hey, can we do something else, please? Like what? Play games? Oh, yeah. Hey everyone, it's Nerdphil, and today I'll be telling you tabletop games you can bring to your party if you've got friends who'd rather play games than, you know, dance. Now these are games that are super easy to learn and get everybody involved, so let's spice up your party. Now the honorable mention goes to Spyfall. Now Spyfall is a game you can actually just play with your phone by going to spyfall.crabhat.com. Now this is a game of a lot of bluffs with a nice twist to it. So the game is pretty simple. Everybody has a role and a location. There's also one spy who doesn't know any idea of what the location is and he doesn't have a role besides being the spy. Now each person will get to ask another person in the circle a question and basically the person gets to answer however they want. You keep this process going until the end of eight minutes where the group has to unanimously decide who the spy is. The group wins if they figure out who the spy is and the spy cannot figure out what the location is. And of course the spy wins if he does figure out the location at any point in the game. Number five, werewolf. <gasps> oh! Now this game is like Mafia, but it's set in the 1700s. Now if you don't know how Mafia works, it's a pretty simple game. People are randomly dealt either being a Mafia or an innocent, and every night the Mafia gets to kill someone, and the innocents during the day decide who they want to kill during the daytime. The innocents win if all the Mafias are dead, and the, all the Mafias win if all the innocents are dead. Now Mafia is cool because it can hold up to 78 people. Now you'll probably never use this function, but it's just nice to know that you can do it. Now what makes this game different from Mafia is that there are more special roles added and it feels like everybody has something to contribute. Now my favorite werewolf role is the Wolverine. Now the Wolverine is an interesting card because if they are the closest werewolf that killed the innocent person, the narrator will grab metal utensils and start clanging them together to indicate to everybody that the Wolverine was nearby. Now the innocents get to play with more fun roles, like Cupid, for instance. Now Cupid is an interesting role because he gets to select two players at the beginning of the game to be lovers. If one lover dies, the other lover will die of immediate heartbreak. Oh no! Now of course, this is a bad thing if you're on the same team because you lose two people on the same team in one fell swoop. But what is super interesting is that if one person is a werewolf and one person is an innocent, they get a new goal and try to kill everybody off because, you know, nobody's going to accept that a werewolf and an innocent person get to fall in love because it's the 1700s. But really, the best rule is the drunk. Hey, who called me? Now the drunk's rule is super simple. He doesn't get to know his real role until the third night, so it uh, really changes the game a lot. Number four, exploding kittens. Now with a game like this, you know you're gonna have some dynamic shenanigans. Now this game is very similar to Uno, except you're encouraged to be a lot more aggressive to your opponents. The goal of the game is super simple. Be the last one standing, which means don't draw the exploding kitten. You can avoid drawing the exploding kitten by skipping your turn, forcing your opponent to draw more cards, stealing your opponent's cards, or just shuffling the deck for the heck of it. Now you start with what's called a diffuse card. So you get a free life even if you draw the exploding kitten first. Here's the catch. Once you draw the exploding kitten and you have a diffuse card, you get to put the exploding kitten back anywhere you want in the deck. Number three, code names. Now this is a game of clues in making sure you get all your secret agents before the other team does. Now there will be a random assortment of 25 cards that have one word. Your spy master knows the exact cards that you need to pick. Here's the catch. They can only give you one word for their clue and a number associated with how many words are maybe related to that word. For example, they might say animal three, which indicates that there are probably three animals out on the table for you to pick. So if you see tiger, lion, or turtle, those are probably the three words that your team would pick. Now, when your team decides that they're finished, or if you guess wrong, the other team gets to go. But watch out. There's an assassin, and if you pick the assassin's word, your entire team loses on the spot. Now, there are other variations of this game, like the Marvel version or the Harry Potter version for your specific group of friends. Number two, bang. Now, this game is also like Mafia, but yeehaw, it's in the Wild West. Now, in this game, there are three different roles. You've got the sheriff and deputies, you've got the outlaws, and then you've got the renegade. 
Now the sheriffs and deputies win if both the outlaws and the renegade is dead. The outlaws win if they just kill the sheriff and the renegade well, he just wants to kill everybody, so everybody has to be dead. Except him, of course. But what's the catch? Everybody knows who the law-abiding sheriff is, but uh, everyone else's rules are hidden, so uh, things get interesting once the guns go a-blazing. Now, this game is played with cards rather than discussions. You have your bank cards that let you shoot your neighbors. You have your miss cards, which let you dodge those bullets coming at you. And of course, you have your beer, which lets you regenerate health, because that's exactly what beer does with bullet wounds. You also play other cards that let you shoot farther besides your direct neighbors, you get to steal cards from other players, and you get to maybe hide a little bit more from other players. But the best card is starting a duel. What's really awesome about this game is that there are character cards passed out to everyone, and each character card has its own unique ability. So there's definitely a lot of replay value in this game. It's time to enforce the law. And number one, Monopoly. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Definitely not Monopoly. Don't, no, no, not a good game at all. No. But for reals, it's Resistance. Now Resistance is about dismantling an evil government or maintaining the evil government. <laughs> now Resistance is a game of lies, deceptions, and most importantly, ruining friendships. Yeah, this game ruins friendship a lot harder than Mario Party, if you can't believe that. Now the goal of the game is pretty simple. Make sure your team wins three out of the five rounds. On one team you have the resistance. Uh, no, not that resistance, different one. And then you have your spies. Now one person in a group will decide between three to five people, depending what round you're in, to go on a mission. Now, if the majority of the players agree that this is a safe team they, and they approve of them going on the mission, they will go on the mission. If the team is approved to go on the mission, each player of that team will secretly put in a success or fail card. Now resistance can only play success cards because of course they wanna win. It only takes one fail to fail the entire mission, unless otherwise stated. Now this game really takes a turn when everybody starts screaming at each other that you're the spy, no you're the spy, no you're the spy. Now this is the best variation of your mafia game but just be prepared to lose your friendships or at least a little bit of trust between your friends. What's great about these games is that they're super light and super easy to carry with you to your party. Party hard and party smart. So what are the casual tabletop games that you guys bring to the party? Comment, like, and subscribe and let me know. I'll see you next time for your nerd film.